Buying a TV can feel like learning a new language, MLA, QDO-led, WO-led, and just when you've wrapped your head around those, along comes something new. Primary RGB tandem OLED sounds like complicated jargon, but it's actually a pretty big deal. In this video, I'll explain what primary RGB tandem OLED actually is, what it means for you as a consumer and viewer, which TVs are using it in 2025, and how it differs from the competition. No overly complicated jargon, just the key things you need to know if you're in the market for a new TV right now. But before we get into what's new, a quick refresh on OLED. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode, and these panels don't use a backlight, and instead, each individual pixel emits its own light. That means OLED TVs can completely turn off individual pixels, giving you pure blacks, infinite contrast, superb color accuracy, and wide viewing angles. Compared to LED TVs, which rely on a backlight controlled in zones, OLED offers a more cinematic image with better precision. Though historically, brightness has been OLED's Achilles heel, especially in lighter, bright rooms. Which brings us to new OLED tech and where primary RGB tandem OLED comes in. It's found in the latest panel technology from LG Display and is actually a big move away from what they've done in the past. LG have dropped their use of MLA technology in their 2025 flagship OLEDs in favor of this new technology. So what is RGB tandem OLED? Well, many OLED TVs today use what's called WOLED, which stands for white OLED. These panels use a white light source, which is filtered through RGB color layers to produce the image you see. It works well, but filtering white light can reduce brightness and efficiency. RGB tandem OLED, nicknamed 4Stack, takes a different approach. Instead of starting with white light and filtering it, the panel stacks dedicated red, green, and blue light emitting layers stacked vertically in a four layer structure, hence the name four stack. These layers emit pure color light directly without needing filters. Previous third gen LG panels use a three layer structure, two blue emitting layers and one combined yellow green layer with RGB colors produced using filters. With RGB OLED, you now have dedicated red and green layers combined with their own blue emissive layers, eliminating the need for color filters. Think of it like doubling the engine under the hood, but also making it more fuel efficient. What does this mean for performance? Well, this technology hasn't just been created to be something new. It's all about being something better. And it brings around three key upgrades. Number one, higher peak brightness. Number two, improved efficiency. And three, better color purity. So when I mentioned OLED's weakness in bright rooms, this is LG's answer to that problem. LG claims this new four stack tech can deliver up to 4,000 nits of peak brightness, which means the flagship LG G5 could be in contention for the brightest OLED TV of 2025. The reality is real world viewing is unlikely to reach those headline figures. Independent testers have claimed around 2,200 nits for HDR peaks, still around 40% brighter than the G4 and likely still one of the brightest OLEDs this year. We've done some internal testing and there is a very notable step up in brightness. These new panels are also set to be up to 20% more energy efficient due to improved light production as well. So four stack is the latest move to level up OLED performance with better brightness, but this isn't the first time we've seen something like this. QD OLED is another key panel tech which which helps OLED deliver better brightness. Developed by Samsung Display, QD OLED panels use a blue OLED backlight with quantum dots which convert the light into reds and greens. This results in improved color volume and brighter images. So the big question then, which is better? Primary RGB tandem OLED or QD OLED? Luckily, we've got that exact head-to-head -head coming very soon to our channel, so you'll want to be sure you subscribe to catch that. However, I can share some key differences right now if you're torn. Looking at the tech, QD OLED is a tried and tested approach that has improved year on year and has consistently delivered a bright OLED performance with punchy colors. However, it's still built around a single blue OLED layer with quantum dots handling the color conversion, and some light energy will be lost in that process. LG's new four stack system doesn't rely on color conversion. By directly emitting red, green, and blue light from separate layers, it can deliver cleaner, purer color output and greater efficiency per pixel. But specs and tech can only tell us so much, and it's the real world performance that we really care about, which is why we've got some of the key models in our studio right now for some proper side-by-side -side comparisons. In 2025, we have the flagship LG G5, which I've actually got behind me, and the Panasonic Z95B, which are both using LG Display's new tandem RGB OLED panels. We've then got the Sony Bravia 8 Mark II and Samsung S95F, which are flying the QD OLED flag. So we've definitely got a great battle for the top OLED this year. 
Now, while it's great to get your head around the current tech, we're always keeping one eye on the horizon at what's next. And looking ahead, there's more to come in the LED versus OLED debate. First up, blue FOLED panels. LG Display is reportedly developing OLED panels based on blue phosphorescence, say that twice, aim for even higher brightness and efficiency. These panels could debut in 2026 and would offer another step up from the current four stack panels. Not to be outdone, Sony are currently working on RGB mini LED displays, which replace traditional white-blue LEDs with red, green, and blue LEDs. The aim of this would be to enhance color accuracy and brightness, and again, we could see this in 2026. Finally, companies like Samsung and TCL are exploring QDAL technology or quantum dot electroluminescent displays. This tech uses self-emissive quantum dots for improved color accuracy and energy efficiency. While it's still early in development, QDAL displays could become a viable alternative to OLED in the coming years. One thing's for sure, TV tech continues to keep us on our toes, which we love. It means we get to make videos like these for you guys, and as consumers, we can keep leveling up our at-home viewing experience with the latest and the greatest. Hopefully you found this helpful, and if you did, make sure you subscribe for plenty more content like this. In fact, here are two other videos you might wanna check out. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.